are starting the session now. Please give me a moment. Okay. So, hi, uh, let me uh, introduce myself. Okay. So, this is Avnish, and uh, I have been working in the in dynamics for the last uh, 15 years. Okay. More than 15 years, 15 plus years. Okay. So, I have worked on different versions of AX, that is, uh, from the desktop version to now cloud version okay that is dynamics 365 fno and i have worked in different industries and carrying knowledge of different domains okay so here i will be giving a brief introduction about uh, or a demo about dynamics and its background right so before we start the session uh, uh, okay so please wait for a moment huh Okay, fine. So here we learn about Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. Okay. Sometimes we call it as D365 FNO or D365 FNO. Okay. All are same, right? These are terms generally we use for Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. Okay. So, what exactly is it? It is an ERP of Microsoft that is. Enterprise Resource Planning, right? So, any one of you from uh, ERP background? Yeah, I work in AX. Okay, you're already in AX, right? So, uh, which versions you have worked in AX? No, 22 I'm worked, but currently I'm working in uh, Dynamics 365 also as a functional okay. and uh, technical, but I'm not okay. very well in uh, technical. I have some. Okay, so just uh, started working in uh, D365, right? Yeah. Okay. 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 For those who are not uh, familiar with ERP, background so let me give an introduction about a brief uh, introduction about uh, this uh, erp what exactly an erp is suppose you are working in a manufacturing industry so, okay so what you uh, first of all what you need you need raw materials right yeah you need raw, raw materials fine from whom you will buy the raw materials it will be from for that you need vendors right okay vendors or you'll say suppliers suppliers okay now what is the next process you will manufacture your product right <coughs> manufacturing sorry manufacture finished goods that will be your production correct you will produce something for the finished goods right now in production there are so many steps involved right like uh, 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 several assembly lines are there uh, and, and several routes are there bomb there is a concept of bomb bomb that is finished goods uh, it can it consists of items right raw material right so there are so many processes involved and so many steps so many stages that are involved to produce a single item right so those come under the production uh, thing, right? Once the good is ready, goods is ready, finished goods, what you will do? You need to market it, to sell it, right? 
whom to sell to customers right you need customers right for the for your final product procure raw materials process the manufacturing okay or produce the goods and sell it to customers so this is the basic thing about a manufacturing unit right but there are so many other things you can see from business perspective only these uh, things or these uh, i mean uh, steps or uh, things you realize right you visualize but there are certain other things in the background right hr okay you need workers also correct for for uh, i mean all these things i mean for procurement for manufacturing for selling you need workers right employees correct those are called workers you need workers as well hr who will be hiring these workers or uh, i mean making policies for the organization of other workers it will be hr right then there would be finance module also finance person right they will be man, uh, maintaining the finance or the salaries or the payroll because when you uh, when when there are there are workers in your organization uh, you will be paying salaries to them right for procurement obviously there will be a procurement department okay which keeps track of the supplies and suppliers and vendors right then some people will be involved in the selling of that product right okay so those all are human resources basically so hr department will be there to manage the human resource as well as to make policies right similarly there are so many other modules uh, in dynamics in an erp so <clears throat> what is the benefit of erp are erp is earlier for if you are i mean uh, uh, if you are using standalone system because see for everything sale purchase accounts accountancy finance hr right for everything there are so many applications available standalone applications right so the pain area is ultimately these have to be integrated right and maintenance becomes very tough or it become a headache right so the benefit or beauty of erp is everything is available all the modules are available in erp itself you don't need to buy separate uh, pro, uh, applications process wise i mean for hr you are using a different uh, solution for finance for workers you for for uh, manufacturing you are using a different application right so there was a problem basically for data integration or for management reporting purpose you need to collect data from various applications and then uh, create a picture of the data right for the management there were chances of data loss or data inconsistency right so these because these all were uh, isolated okay so isolated in the sense all were i mean not integrated a different solution so the way the data is getting structured or data data is getting stored can differ right application a can store data in a different manner b can store in a different manner right so to collect data and to prepare reports or or to uh, prepare graphs charts anything it was very tough task right and ob obviously of course there were chances of data loss and inconsistency so that is why there is a benefit of hr that all these modules are available in the same application everything is available at one place and the most important thing the data is stored in the same database okay so data extraction okay playing with data becomes easier cross department data you can get easily how much sales was done because earlier 
if you want to uh, prepare a report like how much uh, 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 expenditure was there on on uh, uh, procurement right how much sale was done okay so what you need to do you would have to go to uh, both of the uh, departments and they'll extract data from their own application right different application then for th that data without data you have to compile the data right and prepare a report because data will be in different format so you have to create a, a common format and then prepare the data right so that was really a very tough task very painful painful task so now it becomes easier okay one more thing fixed assets right fixed assets so these are also part of erp like fixed assets means whatever the assets you have in your organization so these also could be maintained in dynamics itself in single place okay so you don't need to run here and there for collecting data and preparing reports or for customizations right because tomorrow if something is uh, going to be okay and if you if you buy these applications from different vendors then you need support from them as well right for every because uh, not every person will be uh, uh, i mean uh, capable of doing customizations in all the applications something that it could be say finance could that you are using it could be in a different technology all right raw materials or manufacturing or uh, fixed assets okay this could be in different language suppose something is written in java something is in uh, c++ c sharp dot net uh, uh, some other language okay how is it possible to maintain so you need to have person with skills of different technology different skill set right this becomes a very very costly affair and maintenance is also very costly right so for each domain you need to have or for each application you need to have dedicated person or you need to assign support contract with the vendors right from which you have bought the application right here the thing is benefit is all these are written in a single language and available at a single place in single database right so things become easier you don't need to have person with different skill sets for technical perspective i am saying for fun functional obviously you'll have people who have uh, uh, knowledge in different uh, domains or separate domains right like if a person is good in finance okay uh, he cannot he or she cannot uh, i mean uh, uh, handle the hr department right that is a different thing altogether okay so for that skill set you need people who are uh, having uh, experience in uh, hr having experience in finance right sale purchase like that so these are functional areas okay finance person is not aware of the manufacturing process right so you should have functional consult consultant who is having expertise in manufacturing domain so those skill set people you can hire in your organization and start your work right but from technical perspective everything comes from what tables behind everything behind every screen every data sorry every form every report there are every classes there are classes tables forms reports security objects everything okay it has similar structure i mean the the similar structure means all these tables that uh, doesn't matter which module it belongs to these will be available in at a single place only in dynamics itself i'll show i'll show you the interface how uh, it looks like okay and what i mean uh, with that but the thing is understand like everything the development suppose some <coughs> some uh, modification required in manufacturing process okay you don't need to contact contact any vendor you have technical person just ask them like i'll uh, uh, see i want this process to be added in this while doing this i want this kind of validation okay or i want uh, a separate uh, process to be initiated when the production is getting started or before the production is getting started i i need approval 
suppose you are uh, working in a car manufacturing uh, company okay so whenever the production of a particular model starts or a car starts for every piece because car is a big thing right it's not like to toys or something like that or 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 uh, with having uh, low value right it's, it, it its cost is more right it is a very expensive item right so for that for every piece when you start manufacturing you need to go through approval process once it is getting approved only then you can start the manufacturing or it will go to the uh, manufacturing unit uh, people in the manufacturing line right how to do that okay so you you have to you will customize the production form there itself in dynamics only okay there are frameworks for workflow you will use the workflow framework there and customize or or, uh, or or give the functionality of workflow or you can apply workflow in manufacturing a form or a production form or in a production order similarly finance there are tables there are forms for finance related tables and forms okay they are saying like before processing the salary or payroll okay it needs it to be approved from the ceo it will go for ceo approval and then only we can disburse the salary <coughs> now again workflow is required what do you do just um, just sorry to interrupt yeah. but I, can i take a minute please okay hello um, yeah. yeah yeah so uh uh, uh this i mean on behalf of everyone and if guys uh, uh, i'm wrong then just correct me and then i'll stay quiet uh, avnish you have started introduction of erp um i'm sure like me others do have some idea of erp that's why we are exploring this course at least my purpose of attending today's session is to understand that once this training is completed 40 hours or 50 hours whatever it is what is it that i will be learning from this training abc of ERP that of course we will learn once the regular classes will start hmm. today's objective is I mean if I were you I would rather show from my previous trainings that are completed that end state of this 50 hour training this is what you will we will be capable of developing since this will be a technical course so if hmm. we can see something then I'll then I can relate it that okay if I go ahead with this training then after 40 days or 50 days I will also be capable of developing this form that you're talking about. I do not know what that form is um, mm. or some table enhancements or new tables. I will be capable of creating uh, some look and feel of the code that okay, I'll be capable of writing. these. See, I'll be code. giving. Yes, I will be giving these things. Just giving an overview, right? About uh, ARP. So I'll, I'll, I'll coming to that topic as well. I'll, I'll show you the overview what what is an aot i mean how all objects are developed when i say form how a form looks like okay how a form is designed and what are classes where these are stored all these i'll tell you okay okay thanks so it's not see this is an overview class i cannot di jump directly to the technical part so before that i have to give some background Okay, is that fine? Yeah, okay, you can carry on. Yeah, so this is about the, uh, sorry, where was I? Ah, for approval process, right? So if you want approval in a different place, okay, just use that uh, approval framework and the uh, your job will be done, okay? So process will remain same. Whatever classes are being required for approval, okay? These will be common or whatever fr the framework required for uh, creating approval remains common for each of these things for every form, every place. Doesn't mean which module you are going to implement. Right. Now, coming to the technical part. Okay. So, it is the very first. Uh, I mean, going to the history of dynamics, how it evolved. So earlier, it was called Exapta, and there was a company called Damgard. Okay, so it was it was an European company, I think uh, Denmark from Denmark, right? So they started Exapta. Okay, the first version that I know was 
2.5 maybe 2 also would be there okay then 3.0 right after that it was taken over by microsoft and microsoft renamed it as dynamics ax so the first version for dynamics ax was 4.0 right then there was another release ax or dynamics ax okay 2009 then the last version of this dynamics family was dynamics 2012 so earlier they had introduced several flavors of this dynamic so the, the, the initial was i think feature pack then came r1 r2 r3 r3 was the last version i guess so these all were desktop applications then what are desktop applications okay and then after that they introduced d365 that is dynamics 365 for finance and operations which is cloud based so far already all these versions were desktop versions desktop versions means you need to have uh, i mean uh, uh, procure hardware you need to have your own hardware okay own data center it will be hosted or uh, in your own premise right and you need network okay and there was one or two maybe a couple of application servers would be there okay that will be running the application database server database backup server right and then you need client software so client needs to be installed at all the machines whoever is trying to access or who is the authorized user so for each user's machine a laptop or desktop you need to install this app this client okay this uh, dynamics ax client so through client only they could access okay but now for d365 fno it is cloud cloud based okay so for accessing dynamics you don't need to have any uh, uh client application installed on your machine okay how then how it works it works through browsers okay just put the url and you are good to go with using dynamics right 365 so when i say how it looks like What happened? Some black screen? Yes. Okay. There is some issue with the VM. So let me restart the VM. Okay, now sharing my screen once again.
So it will take some time. Okay. I'll show you how it looks like. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about the development environment. So in till AX 2012, the uh, IDE that is integrated development environment IDE environment right it was MOF X but now it has been moved to Visual Studio so you will be learning in Visual Studio the entire development is being done in Visual Studio for D365 FNO. Okay. Okay, I won't go into functional part now. Okay, so let's see in, in Dynamics itself. The people might be waiting to see the interface. Okay, so this is how Dynamics looks like, the user interface. Okay, so what, when I said like you, you need, uh, I mean URL to uh, access Dynamics. So this is the URL for different environments, if it is live or UAT or, or your development environment, each environment will have a different link, right? Different URL. So just paste that URL and you can see the interface dynamics will get loaded for you okay so you don't need to have uh, i mean install a client application on your machine just put the url through the browser and you can access it you can good to go with you're good to go with the uh, development uh, process right uh, sorry uh, the, uh, access the application okay uh, another thing <clears throat> these three lines if you click here you see these are the modules okay available in dynamics okay and i'll show you the difference how it looked like in earlier version sorry no this screen UI. Yes. If you see, this was, see, this is D3 uh, Dynamics uh, AX 2012. Okay. So the interface was like this. You see, this is a, a client application basically. So you can access your Dynamics application through client application on your desktop, right? But now, this is a new interface. This below, this is, uh, I mean, you will seeing a different interface on the right side because this is a older version of the screenshot of the dynamics, right? But the newer version or the latest version looks like this. Okay. So this is how it looks like. And you see, these are modules. So modules contain categorization of screens, reports, processes, right? So all the processes or, uh, or screens or reports related, related to particular things, say accounts payable. This is for sales, sorry, purchase part or procurement, you can say, okay. So this is screen, this module stores all the processes related to the uh, procurement uh, department, right? People, what, what the procurement department people do? These screens are for them only. Similarly, AR for salesperson accounts receivable that is for sales. So all sales related things are placed here. Okay. Budgeting. Okay. Budgeting you can see. Then GL the first, uh, very important thing general ledger that is GL because everything has a cost. If you transport your uh, uh, raw material 
or procure your raw material or transport from one place to another place, one warehouse to another warehouse or within warehouse, one aisle to different aisle, right? Or one rack to different rack. There is a cost, right? So these are linked with every module in dynamics is linked with GL, that is general laser, okay? And from where these come, so you can see different modules here. And how this comes, okay, this comes through, all these are nothing but, these are, this come from here, AOT, that is application object tree, AOT, that is application object tree. Fine. When you say accounts receivable, all customers, right? When you open this form, actually what you are opening from user interface, it is, I know the form names, I'll quickly get you to that form itself, form directly. Trust table. Okay. So when you are opening this form, you are basically opening or using or calling, let it load, this cust table form. The form behind every link, every link, what you see, which you see here, that is available here only in AOT, right? So it is categorized form. Everything is stored like data types. All the data types like base enums, I will we'll talk uh, into details in, in our classes. Okay. So about the types, what exactly base enum and extended data types are. But let me tell you, these are every object belongs to a category and it is stored category, uh, uh, categorically here. So if you create a class, it will always reside inside this code uh, inside code there is a node called class so if you create class automatically it will be saved here under classes right if you create any base enum any data type extended data type it will automatically be saved here so you don't need to bother or don't need to waste your time finding where it exactly it is stored simply just uh think like okay what uh, i mean you should know like what you are searching for what you are looking for is it a class is it a form is it a, a table okay if, if it is if it's table tables are stored here inside data model tables right so just i mean uh you need to search in the particular node only because you must be knowing what you are looking for you are looking for a table you are looking for a class you are looking for a form you are looking for a menu a menu item okay all these have nodes here respective nodes and will be available on the type of the, the object right which type of object you will create it will come under respective node right now let me show you with a simple uh, say new project next say demo project create <clears throat> okay say if i am going to create a new form add new item say data model table okay my demo table add okay so, uh, where to find this table because i know i have created a table right so just go to the aot inside the tables my demo table it will automatically be available here come here saved within the table modes similarly if you create a form 
okay and then or any of the objects whatever because see while creating object okay add new item you see these are the templates right or these are the objects items that you can create right and this has further categorization correct so when you create these okay these will be saved inside respective node in aot okay so this is one of the things now this is how the design looks like uh, if you see tables have fields field node because as it is a new table and we have not created any field yet so this is blank otherwise you can create fields methods if you have any methods these will be available so for everything there are nodes right and there is a concept of model so it has got two views model view and classic view so model we will be learning in the when when the actual classes start okay because demo it's not possible to explain uh, the everything in in the, the demo okay so it has got different nodes each report each node has a purpose and stores a particular type of item only right code user interface forms styles blah 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 code these will be classes say sales form letter so let me explore one class if you see the code okay so the language is even in in the on premise version or desktop version and here uh, in d365 the language used is x++ it is the same with some added functionalities right so this is how the code looks like you will be creating a classes you have methods here all the methods and there are two views okay for every object this is the code view you can view the designer and designer you can see the list of all the methods right then if you uh, view code it will be available like this you can see like this and you can explore the methods here also when you click this drop down it will show you the, on the left side it will show you the name of the class or form or object right and on the right side it will show you list of all the methods if you want to jump to a particular method say pre prompt in it click this and it will directly take you to this method okay so this is how the user interface looks like fine and how to see that? yeah yeah account receivable model for purchase and recruitment sorry the account receivable model belongs to purchase and recruitment department no account accounts receivable uh, is for uh, sales sales or sales finance and, or sales and marketing for for uh, for purchase or procurement it is accounts payable and one more module is that is procurement and sourcing sir is procurement and sourcing and another one account payable accounts payable yes okay thank you what is the table name for this two account payable and account no 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 the, the, see there are this is not only one table there are so many tables okay there are there is not only one table there are multiple tables uncountable tables yeah we can find out here correct right click and like this we can find out what are the forms using what are the yes tables. yes 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 but from here you cannot find the table name you need to open the object and from there you can find so these will be explained during the classes okay so what i am telling is okay, okay when the actual class starts right you will see how how because suppose some uh, tomorrow if someone says like the user is asking to add some additional field in the all vendors form right how you will get the name of this form tomorrow they, they said like oh, in the accounts payable parameter i know i want to add these many fields or, or i know i want uh, these 
a sort of customization how you do unless you know the name of the object or the table behind the form right behind the data source so these you need to identify there is a very simple way to identify how to get the name how to uh, do the customization okay which place to do the do the customization which object will be in which object to do the customization so these okay. will be yes yes and the process is very simple okay so i'll tell you during the classes okay so okay. Okay, and and also one more thing, like every module, when you uh, uh, I mean uh, explore, you will see similar structure. Similar means vendors, right? Then purchase orders, invoices, payments. These are specific uh, brokers and uh, broker and royalties. These are specific to accounts payable only, right? Means for procurement and sourcing kind of thing or purchase department used by purchasing right but rest of the things if you see inquiries and reports periodic tasks setup okay these are common these will be available in almost all the modules because see these contains uh, module wise information and these are common see periodic tasks uh, inquiries and reports setup right periodic tasks inquiries and report periodic tasks setup go to uh, here uh, some uh, any other module say general laser okay collapse you see periodic tasks inquiries and reports here is it is journal setup or laser setup okay so these things periodic inquiries and reports and setup these are available in all the modules across dynamics okay so these remain same these are available everywhere in all of the modules fine so <clears throat> and generally what happens okay and there are different environments okay like production and uh, let me show you There is something called LCS, that is life cycle services. So all the environments, dynamics environments, like you, you, you would have be having multiple environments, multiple in the sense you will have, obviously you will have uh, UAT environment and then production environment, right? So all these can be maintained through LCS, that is life cycle services, okay? You, you need to have login to dynamics uh, lifecycle services uh, okay and you ask for credentials from your client and see deployment deployment means uh, if you make some changes okay do some customization in your application how to do the deployment deployment from i mean from one environment to another means uh, if, if you have uh, if you are given the task to develop something you'll do in your uh, 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 here in your local uh, or uh, development environment right now you'll you'll do the unit testing and then it has to be released to other uh, uh, environments like UAT where the actual user will be testing the customization right because the end user is the ultimate user right he has to he or she has to certify like uh, th this has been working or not or it is working as desired or not right so you will be placing your or, or, or deploying your code from uh, development environment to uat environment right so the deployment has become very easier unlike ancestors okay this is very very easy just create the deployment package and it is done through LCS, just through button clicks. You don't need to do anything or any other process, right? Just upload the process in, uh, upload the deployment, create package from, <coughs> excuse me, upload, uh, create package from your development environment, okay? Upload it on LCS, <coughs> right? And from there, just 
uh, deploy uh, i mean uh, select the environment in which you want to uh, deploy and click there is there are certain buttons need to specify like which package you want to deploy and click ok and it will be done okay earlier you need to run the command you need to be attentive right but the deployment uh, whether it fails or or, or or is it successful right you have to wait for that but here it's not like that just schedule the deployment and it is a, there is a background process that runs okay for you and it the, it does the deployment right but this is maintained by microsoft okay so if deployment fails you need to raise ticket or you need to consult microsoft okay like what was the reason you'll you'll see the log if you are able to identify the cause just uh, remove resolve the cause and uh, upload the package uh, re-upload okay and otherwise if you are not able to get uh, the reason why it got failed you need to raise ticket to microsoft so they uh, they will help you in resolving the issue okay so deployment becomes very easy and this is lcs right from lcs you can download the vsd as well vsd means uh, if you want to set up your local uh, installation of dynamics okay then you will download the files here vsd files and install in your local machine fine and the architecture is cloud based right so if you see here okay it is cloud based like all the users earlier in in windows application you need to have windows active directory and all the users or dynamics user need to be created in active directory first and then from there only the users can be imported in dynamics now uh, here in in as it is a cloud version okay so you need to create users in azure active directory right and it can be managed through microsoft office 365 admin center okay regarding the users management can be done from here and then uh, it will be uh, make it as uh, import the users in azure active directory and then give rights to access to dynamics 365 so only those users having rights of accessing dynamics can be can access dynamics actually others cannot suppose you have 500 users in your organization and you authorize or you give right or access to only 10 uh, person to dynamics only those 10 person will have access to dynamics they can open the dynamics like this url right but rest 490 employees cannot okay and this is what i showed lcs so everything related to environment you can create new development environment from here okay from lcs if you want to uh, create a cloud hosted environment development environment it can be done from lcs lifecycle services maintenance updations upgrades for um, different uh, uh, app, uh, i mean uh, servers means uat production you have to deploy code right so these can be done through lcs only upgrades upgrades means sometimes microsoft also release some packages some patches right so those can be done through lcs only and there is again visual studio team server that is devops okay so devops means it maintains a different version of your code like you are doing something some programming okay and if your environment is connected with devops what you'll do you will check in the code so at the when you are done you will check in the code so that code will be shelved in uh, devops right so another user suppose in uh, in your organization four people four developers are working working simultaneously right so how to migrate code right so what you'll do all those will be connected with devops so every piece of change that you do you check in and others will get the latest code and they'll have the uh, recent code there right apart from that there is a very interesting concept that microsoft has introduced here okay that is called 
extension framework this is the backbone of development or customization so each developer will be working in extension framework only so extension framework benefit is okay till our, uh, in previous versions okay suppose there was one table table one right it has got say 15 fields now and there was a concept of layers okay so uh, and as it is application or, or uh, an ERP okay so it comes with standard objects like these objects I have not been developed by me these have been as it is a product right so these objects are shipped by Microsoft in this package itself okay these are standard objects I have not created this sales module this this uh, purchase module these are provided by or this, this these are the part of product right packaged together so basic functionality Microsoft has already given and with their respective objects non now on top of that what what our job will be our job is to do customization as per clients requirement like if the if it is okay client is okay with whatever the uh, Microsoft has given then the, the client can go for vanilla implementation this is called vanilla where there is no customization right but if, if the if the person if the client wants something else some some other uh, processes to be developed okay on top of the standard product okay then comes the role of technical person where we will do customization for them for the client right as per their need okay so <clears throat> earlier what happened like a table has got 15 fields now you add the client asks for uh, one more field okay one more field to be added right to store some other uh, sort of information okay now total of 15 fields fields will be there in this table right now when you deploy the uh, this application from after the customization has been done tested it has to be deployed from dynamics to uh, I mean uh, from development environment to uh, uh, UAT or production right in that case what happened like <clears throat> first of all this one field so where you added this one field you modified the standard object only directly so this new field was created in the standard object provided by Microsoft means this is my table okay if in trust table if you if the client asks to add one more uh, say view designer one more object one more field here then what uh, you do okay you would add the field here itself in the base object directly in the base object itself so when the package will be created for deployment this whole object will go i mean this whole form will go but in production as it is a product okay so this base object will already be available in the uh, production uh, server right or in uat then why to send these things these 15 fields when i know these 15 fields are available everywhere in my development in my production as well as in my uat environment then why to send these these 15 fields uh, again okay because the structure of the base object remains same the purpose is to move customizations only right whatever we have done so why not to send this one field only and it will get attached get linked with these 15 fields of this object right if we send all these uh, objects okay then the, i have to ship entire application i have to deploy entire application it will take so much of time right now what microsoft has done suppose i want to create a new field let me explain the uh, explain you ex extension framework new string okay i added one field here let me save it it won't allow you to save means the base product will remain intact you cannot make any changes in the base object 
so what then how the customization will be done you see here beside every node there is an extension node table table extension views views extension queries query extensions right data type base enum base enum extensions edt edt extensions user interface form form extensions menu menu extensions menu items menu item extensions so it means this is the extension framework provided by microsoft so what you need to do you will create an extension of the base object okay that will be created i mean that will create or a new object will be created all together which is linked with your base object right so new fields new methods whatever you will write you will create those will be saved in the new object only so when you do the migration okay or deployment only the custom objects right means if i take example for this table one so this was related to uh, dynamics ax now what's the difference in dynamics uh, d365 okay and this one field will be part of table one extension okay so this field this base table remain intact okay when you create extension a new object is getting created right and it will be placed inside the respective extension node if it is table it will come under a table extension if it is a form it will be there in form extension right and when you move the customization or deploy the customization this uh, only the extended objects will be the part of the deployment object deployable uh, uh, package okay it won't consider these one right only these objects will go right why not these objects because these are already available in the respective environment this is base object so base objects will be available everywhere right the only thing is the custom objects how to send the custom objects through the table extension through the extension framework and only the extended objects become the part of deployable package so deployment becomes easy okay easy and less time consuming okay rather than sending the whole application the whole 15 fields if i deploy only one field obviously it will take less time to so save our time and it will be reliable as well i mean it won't disturb the existing functionality about table one because sometimes what happens microsoft also releases uh, uh, service packs or uh, updates right so sometimes what they do is the problem in earlier versions was they change the structure sometimes they change the structure of the base object itself means suppose the, it has 15 fields now in the next release what they'll do they might add one more field okay they, they add 16 fields now your previous definition now a total of six, 17 fields are there right but your previous uh, this thing uh, package okay or installation that has 15 15 fields only right 16 fields 15 plus 1 right but microsoft added one new uh, field so total 16 so the structure of the base table itself got changed right now when you try to update upgrade or, or deploy a conflict will occur it will say like one field is missing or you need to resolve the issue manually one more thing okay addition is not a problem the problem is like sometimes what microsoft does it removes the fields earlier it was 15 what they do 
sometimes in the new release they can delete the fields as well suppose they have removed one field now the base object gets uh, changed right and you have your customization on the base object itself right so earlier you had 15 fields and you have written some logic on your uh, or added one more field here right now in the next release microsoft removed one field but your base object is containing still it will have it will expect 15 fields right so there is a problem then conflicts you need to resolve okay here in d365 the benefit is you are not making any change in the base table so doesn't matter if today it is 15 fields tomorrow it could be 16 it could be 13 it could be 12 so add or reduce you don't have to do anything right but yes the problem is there are it, it doesn't mean uh, i mean there could not be any problem okay there could be problem like suppose you have uh, 15 fields earlier and now in your extension framework you have created a method and you are referring the 15th field in your code now in the next release uh, microsoft has removed this field okay the 15th field and your table or your method extended object still refers to that field which is no more available then it will give you error like object not found right so in that case you have to manage yourself or you have to find the root cause and resolve the issue maybe microsoft has uh, moved field from one table and they have given a new new uh, moved it to a new table or new place or somewhere else okay so that you need to uh, identify you need to check with microsoft like uh, say i have uh, you need to raise a ticket like i have to uh, uh, i have done customization on this field and this is no more available okay so how to resolve this so they will be uh, providing you the help or you need to explore yourself okay self exploration on internet or uh, check with your colleagues or something okay then you will find a solution for that. so the thing is you have to manage yourself okay so th there are very less chances of removal it happens rarely but yes it happens right so that is why the the, uh, so the benefit is like if you are not making any changes in the uh, base object so it is maintained by microsoft only right so even if they release release some new uh, thing okay new uh, um, uh, service pack or something if they make any changes in the table uh, base table or base object you don't need to worry about that okay and your customizations will be in the extension framework only so yeah, this, this is, is how it would be going to be excuse me ah uh, sorry <laughs> Yeah, we are using supposed to be multiple environment. Mm -hmm. You using multiple development environment VM version. I am using how it will be useful for extension framework here. You are using your own VMware VM development environment. I am also using how it will mm -hmm. be useful for. How it will be? Uh, it will be merge both. both I added one more field. You added two more field. Uh, you mean no, the the same, uh, I mean be... for the same for the same project or or for different uh, projects what are you saying means i didn't know no. suppose four developers same are working project, for we are a... having many developers right yeah so that can be that is what i told you na that can be done through uh, this azure devops okay all of you will be linked with or connected with azure devops right or there are other ways also right like you can move the you can give the if, if you're not because getting uh, azure devops in place there is a cost so very few clients go for azure devops but yes it is a good thing to uh, go for devops so that uh, you can uh, there are so many benefits like you can uh, compare your code as well like like what was there in the previous version what was there previously and what is the change that have you made in your uh, local object right so so many benefits 
if it is not connected to devops all the environments are not sync not connected to, De to devops then you need to migrate code manually you can export your project okay there are options like from here this is my project okay suppose i have created this table and my colleague doesn't have this table now right how how he will have right so what i'll do here export project and uh, an axpp file will be generated and the the person or the in the other machine all the other people have to import this project alternatively i can give them the file as well because everything here is stored in the whatever you see here actually is stored in the form of xml file so i can give them the xml file itself also okay i can give the model file as well model folder so there are so many ways for code migration the code migration you are telling uh, azure devops uh, it is a cost we have to be configured that one it is expensive or normal price no it is it has a cost you have to take subscription okay see in this part of course will you explain that concept ah uh, no that is not part of this uh, course okay and uh, you uh, at the starting but of the yes, class for, to... for other other things other purpose, other ways of migration like from how to migrate for using the project that that i just told you like export project and how to import or as i said this is uh, stored as a xml file so i'll tell you how to uh, migrate through xml files right and how to create deployable packages because see this is cloud based environment so for everything you need to have subscription right okay, okay for everything you need to have subscription for lcs as well for azure as uh, uh, as well so for training purpose a person or an organization cannot take uh, or even visual path don't have these subscriptions right so this is just a, 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 i mean a, a basic tutorial about dynamics okay and i already told you like how see there are so many things that have been written okay so something some part of it will be theoretical only because i cannot show like there is something for code upgrade or upgrade right upgrade means you know you need to have an application of lower version and then you need to means if you are working in dynamics 2012 you need to upgrade it to d365 it is actually the upgrade process is a process of months it, it could take three or four months or maybe five months right two steps are there the code upgrade as well as the data upgrade because AX 2012 would have its own uh, table structure and in Dynamics 365, it has given, uh, there are, the table structure could be different, right? So you need to uh, bring your uh, code as well as uh, the uh, database to D365 platform, right? So this is why there are so many conflicts would occur and so many steps are there. So theoretically, it can be shown right up uh, it can be explained but it cannot be shown here right so but something because what i am saying is the syllabus is a generic some some part of it is functional as well and some part that is i mean the person who has uh, prepared this syllabus they are not much aware about uh, the distinction between functional and technical so they have prepared a common uh, i mean uh syllabus okay so not everything will be covered everything means a few topics that is not part of this uh, uh technical perspective apart from that what I'll, I'll do there are something that is missing okay that is but really important like data migration okay how to, because see it is saas based application software as a service right so for production for see this is my development environment right but i won't have similar environment for production and uat i cannot go to the code go and, go and look at the code in production because i'll be given only url url means something like this to access environment not the code not the database here i can see the database as well as code right Things are different in production and UAT. You cannot have access to 
uh, the remote desktop of or your or RDP. You cannot take RDP of uh, production or UAT environment. Okay, this this will be this is maintained by these are maintained by Microsoft only itself. Okay, so but suppose there is a need to get the production database restored at your local machine in your development environment or you want uat database to be connected with your development environment or you want to debug uat but you cannot okay but you cannot go to the uat environment then how you can debug okay how you can connect to the database if there is some data correction that has to be done in uat since you don't have access to the uat database how you will do that as you you don't have rights to go to the uat server right so these can be done through things are different from dynamics 2012 to 365 in in 2012 you there was a production server okay there was a uat server like any other server it was a server right which has code and uh, database everything right so you can jump into the into the server and you can directly debug in production as well but here it is not like that as you can see the code in production, but here you cannot see the production code. Although it is migrated from uh, development server only, but you cannot have access to those things. So those things I'll be teaching, like if you come across such situation, like how to restore the database, how to connect uh, UAT database to uh, your uh, dynamics, uh, I mean, uh, development environment, how to do the debugging, okay? How to make correction because all these things are done through lcs okay but this has not been mentioned in the course material but these will be only covering in the course so there are so many topics that are missing okay those will be covered here like if, if and let me tell you like if you see there is a uh, 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 link called in the syllabus it has been written power bi integration okay so don't get confused like you will i'll be teaching you power bi no because power bi is a different thing again and again it requires a subscription right so these will be theoretical like how to integrate or how to just do the setup okay but even uh, could you, could unless you have the environment you even if you see the setup uh, there is no i don't think any benefit for that so better to focus on only those things that are not mentioned in here in syllabus and those will be covered hey, excuse me yeah, the power bi we need a extra license uh, we need or it is uh, yes free? yes yes no 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 you need, need extra license you need okay. extra, license. extra license power bi is a different thing altogether different application would you provide any material material for what uh x um, dc system f and o are you talking about environment? No, 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 no. That's material. It's like no notes. course material. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. No, there is no such course course material uh, available. I can give you links. Okay, you can go to on uh, Google search for those links. Okay, and to get any help, how to uh, search these things, I'll uh, I'll tell you. And. Uh, okay. uh, during this uh, I mean, uh, course, you will be given assignments assignments so yeah. uh, me, uh, will you provide a, a, a extra session for any doubt clarification or will we have to do in the only regular sessions only doubt uh, yeah doubt it session. will be in the regular sessions only there will be no extra classes for the clarification no for but 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 there are ways there are ways you can ask the moderator to uh, for my contact number okay and you can uh, post your queries on uh, uh, my WhatsApp because okay. I, have, I, I have I have I mean given training provided training to so many uh, uh, batches okay so still two years mm. back also the people from those batches even today if they, they have said, have any query or doubt they post me the query okay in the WhatsApp but it's not necessary that I will respond immediately because I have also my uh, professional commitments and personal as well. So when I get time, definitely I get back to them, but the response could not be instant. Okay, fine.
Yeah, what about uh, dual right and logic ops? Anything you will be going to explain, sir? Sorry? Dual right in CRM? No, no, no. CRM, no CRM. Uh, what about uh, logic ops? No. Okay. Only dynamic. Actually, the time frame is very difficult for me. Now I'm in uh, case here. It's now... Okay. Is the, I'm also working. Uh, office timing is this is the office starting time. I have to mm. travel. This will be fixed time for this. This is yes, not suitable for me. Uh, no, it, this will uh, it will be the, the morning batch only. Uh, Seven thirty to eight thirty, or maybe from eight to nine, but not uh, after that. Any other batches is there? Evening batch. Yes, one evening batch is there, but that is going to be ended in the next week so a few classes are there so once it is finished okay then i can i'll check with the moderator and we'll uh, go for a new uh, uh, evening but see the problem with evening is as all of us are working right so evening we, we we know like we don't have any fixed time right so might be there are chances many times the batch get gets cancelled okay because all of you must be knowing like leaving from the office there is no fixed time right sometimes you have to stay late correct right? so if i'm working till late hours then most of the times it happens right so it's difficult like the classes maybe in a week only three or four classes will be there at least one or two days i mean uh, uh, late staying or something then it gets cancelled Okay, and it, it is difficult for me as well, like to rush to the regular for the class. Okay, so I cannot leave my work in between and go for the class, right? So, better morning thing is morning we have time, okay, we have a routine, or evening we don't have routine, right? So, because we have to go uh, by 10 a.m. or 10 30 a.m., we leave for office, right? So, in that case, what we can do. 7:30. That is why it is uh, kept. Uh, it has been scheduled. At, I mean, uh, early morning. And uh, the uh, and one more doubt you will cover only the sort of few topics, right? Which you have told, which is not mentioned in the curriculum. Not only few topics. Okay. Means all the things, all the uh, topics that have been uh, mentioned in the curriculum, those will be, uh, uh, I mean, covered. Apart from that, because there okay, is something okay. called a, a service framework, which has not, which is not uh, part of the syllabus, right? Okay, okay. But, yeah. but I know. Deba I think debugging is also not mentioned in the debugging. Ah, debugging is not mentioned, mentioned, but but without debugging, how you can work? So debugging mm. is understood. It will be uh, uh, explained. Okay. So, if you don't mind, can you share the which are, which are the topics extra we will be covering the to the uh, management, so they can share us share with us those who are in the class right now to Nishan Barkatali and oh, for me. Okay, these are the. What happened? Uh, you can see it on the screen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. See, this, this will be covered. Yeah. Introduction, architecture, comparison. Already, I told you. Explained this yeah. today itself, right? And no need to go into the earlier versions, right? Because I cannot show you there, and there is no meaning of uh, seeing the development environment and for all the yeah. previous versions, right? So this mm. this has already been explained. Cloud models, mm. okay. Cloud model, like I'll show you how <laughs> the basic structure of cloud and cloud meaning, meaning okay. So yes, this will be theoretical it. only, right? Introduction to Azure. This will be theoretical part, okay. Mm. Again, this architecture it will be theory, license mm. model. These all are basically theories, right? Then yeah. application explorer that I told you, model management. Mm. These will be practical packages. These are the actual development works. These okay. all these things. Okay. So these okay. will be theoretical only. 
Mm. Everything we, which you see here, these all mm. are practical mm. things. Okay. Mm. From here okay. to here. Okay. Okay. This is reporting. Okay. Power BI integration. This will be theoretical part. Level so, handling. so for the theoretical part, you will provide any uh, PPT presentations or nothing? Uh, there is no such PPT. Okay. Just okay. we'll explain because see power integration means if you don't have power BI with you, then there is hmm. no meaning of uh, having the integration, right? Just the basics like what does it mean? Because I, I don't just, have just power you will BI. You will, just you will explain the, the steps or how can we integrate yes, the power steps BI. Steps or, or the purpose, what is the meaning hmm. of this, right? Okay, got it. Then level of handling, this will be covered, hmm. okay? Hmm. Workflows, practical, totally these, these all these are practical. Configuration keys, these are not yeah. used in D365, but still they have mentioned it. References, yeah. I'll tell you, practical, okay? Hmm. XDS, XDS will hmm. be theoretical, but security hmm. model, this will be practical, okay? Okay. Roles, duties, privilege, permissions, these will be covered, these will be shown how to create, except this, hmm. this will be a theory, theory only for XDS, right? Okay. Customizations. Now all these are related to development. So these will yeah. be uh, customizations. Customizations means this will be mm -hmm. practical. We will be covering in the session with practical examples, right? Now got it. <clears throat> this one services or data service. Yeah. Okay. Compared to mm -hmm. Hmm. Deployment model, how to create packages, deployment packages, deployment packages, moving customization to production. This will be explained, okay? But this will be hmm. theoretical only because we don't have uh, a production model in hand, right? Production environment. Yeah. Upgrade, this will be theoretical because for hmm. this, you need to have AX2012 environment, which is not possible, right? So yeah. just, just we'll know what exactly um, uh, we won't go into that much detail for upgrade. Mm. Just know yeah. what upgrade is. Yeah, Just got it. Yeah, task mm. recording, trace parser, mm. trace parser also. <clears throat> I'll show you, but we won't go into that much detail. Fine. Okay. Similarly, Fine. for uh, for uh, Power BI integration, it will be an introduction only. It won't be mm. covered into that much detail because I don't have Power BI with me. So mm. these are the things, okay? okay? But apart from these, see here, mm. if you see data migration mm. or, or uh, I mean, uh, any other environment like UAT, data migration mm. or data restore, taking backup, how to take backup of the database, these have not been mm. mentioned, right? how mm. to connect, how to debug, how to fix issues in UAT environment. These mm. are not explained here, right? So these mm. will also be covered. That is why I have said this is an old syllabus and mix of so many things. Yeah, got it. Right. So don't mm. go by topics, but rest assured, mm. whatever is relevant or necessary from a development perspective, those will mm. be covered. Some extra things will also be covered. Because I have okay. been part of this industry for so long. I know what is important for uh, a developer, okay, so for technicals. So these will be okay. covered. Okay. Uh, Mr. Avinas, yeah. you told me about Azure de de development environment. Means uh, once LCS login, we have to download that uh, VM. VMs. Uh, yeah. VMs, we can use both, uh, both all the guys like this, correct? Ah, uh, 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 sorry, sorry, come again, please. One, no, supposed to be you and me as a developer. Uh, I'm going, yeah. we are both going to be a LCS and download VM from there and we have to use it, correct? No, 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 no. See, for, this is for, I mean, your purpose. Your purpose uh, means... Uh, no, for synchronous issues, purpose, right? but uh, you, see, are, you are you are yeah. If you are going for learning, right, or for uh, R and D. No, no, purpose, no. Right? I'm not talking about learning. 
uh, yeah. learning we we will create a virtual machine i am not talking about as a vr as a team we are is a development yeah, as a team, uh, yes then as we as are team, already working then, in company yeah. yes 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 then in that case you don't need to download the vm because you will be having the virtual machine in uh, sorry development servers in place already right but but there are if you if you have cloud hosted environments then no need to download correct but if you don't have cloud hosted because sometimes see what happens uh, uh, what microsoft does, uh, i mean the architecture is like you need to have at least one uat and one uh, production server if you go for uh, production right for the, for for the uh, I mean, uh, subscription but it is not mandatory that you need to have cloud hosted development environment as well right it is up to you if you want cloud hosted environment you can pay rent to them and they will provide you the uh, cloud hosted environment they'll they'll uh, give the rights to create uh, development machines for you these can be done through lcs only if you don't want to uh, get the cloud hosted environment and you want on premise development server what you can do you download from the uh, shared assets library okay and uh, <clears throat> create your own virtual machine or link it with hyper view or something right yeah that is okay sir. my my uh, clarification for supposed to hmm. be as a team you told na uh, hmm. azure development environment hmm that purpose i am asking this is my question azure development purpose means what no you and me is same working as uh, same see, project see, there are, yeah same projects so there are two types of development environments right one is on premise other one is cloud hosted environment so cloud hosted environments will be the servers will be available in cloud itself and that can be managed through lcs okay you can start you can stop from lcs itself right now several people are working on uh, the same project right okay so they, yeah. they need to work together correct that is what your question is yeah so how they will work right in that case yeah. in that case generally what happens all the development environments are connected with a central place that is called azure devops okay so where the purpose is like you will write your code check in your code there is a cust uh, i mean uh, uh, process called check in and check out right check out means you uh, log uh, you i mean uh, uh, call that object for writing something right so it will yes. be unlock you are unlocking basically taking the code from that uh, develop uh, devops to your local machine you will make the changes and now then after making changes suppose in the same table if you and your colleague has to work create fields or write some code right how it will then how your changes will move to that person correct in that case you will check out that object write your code do your customization and then check in check in means the object will be logged and saved into devops now the other person will also be connected with devops then what that person will do that will also get the latest version of that code and check out that object so that when when the person gets the latest code from devops he will have the your changes available in his code any links for uh, azure devops any link you have yeah i can share the links see because i told you everything cannot be shown and devops is not part of this uh, syllabus right but I'll, I'll i'll tell you the concepts and i'll i'll share the links as well if you want it's not only about devops there are certain topics that are that come in your mind and which is not part of this uh, syllabus you can ask me right i won't maybe i won't be able to explain or uh, due to the uh, commitments or, uh, or the time limit time limitation but i can try to give a proper link so that it will be helpful for you yeah, okay. don't think like it's... it's only about this syllabus okay even while learning x plus plus see i'll i'll tell you the basics only okay it won't cover the advanced topics advanced means 
uh, 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 means making changes in the existing because sales order posting it is an ocean itself right so that cannot be uh, uh, taught like well, for every process there are classes and when you get experience or used to work on it then you will be knowing the things about this like where to write and which method to write because there are so many posting classes vouchers getting posted so those how can we explain no so just the basic x plus plus will be taught right but still if you face any doubt if you have any difficulty or if you have any queries or if you want to do your uh, i mean self exploration self r and d right for your purpose i can share you the link about x plus plus from where to start how to start if you have any difficulties in oops concept i'll give you a link to which will help you understanding oops concept, uh, concepts easily so that part i can do okay uh, yeah actually it is a very good session but actually my time timing is not suitable for me any uh -huh. other timing sir please uh, uh, let me know actually this is my office starting time mm -hmm. actually i'm waiting for last uh, one month with the visual birth they told me this is the timing i may prepare for them for evening time they give me today but it is very useful for me it is i'm learn lot of the things but the timing is not suitable for this okay so what are your office timings no now is my 8 o'clock here okay you are outside somewhere i mean abroad yeah i'm in abroad yeah okay uh, then 8 to 5 8 to 5 but evening time i can attend the class no problem in office time i can attend but this is a traveling time okay 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 this is the problem for me when i was driving the time it's very difficult to attend the classes that is the problem office mm -hmm. time also no problem for me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay okay then uh, you can check with visual path if they have some other batch uh, available then they might adjust you in that batch because for me it's uh, i mean presently i am already busy with one evening batch but it is going to be uh, ended by maybe by the next week but i'm not okay, sure no whether problem. it is not urgent for me if you offer finishing that one please ask them to let me know i will join uh, it's not urgent already i'm waiting okay. for month no issue 